Hi, it's James and welcome to our 10th Risk OS C program tutorial and today we're going to be looking at menus um, in fact particularly we're going to be looking at these menus that made if you uh, menu click on something in the icon bar um, so we're going to be editing the same application we've been editing in our last uh, three or so tutorials our tutorial 6 application so at the moment, you open it, it loads it into the icon bar, you click on that, it opens a window, we add some text, click on the button and it will change the button text. And when we hit close, it closes the whole application. So what we want to do is we want to make it so um, that we close it down the icon bar using a menu instead of using the X button. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to open our tutorial 6 uh, file and we're going to make it so it doesn't close. Uh, when we have our close window request. So we're going to comment out the quit equals true part of that. Now, let's have a look at how menus work. So if we go into our software interrupts, we're going to look for something that look, looks pretty useful. Here we go, create menu. That looks good. So it takes a pointer to a menu and an X and Y coordinate. So that's going to put the menu on the screen. So how do we make the menu itself? So it's a Wimp menu type. We've got a union that describes the text, if it's indirected or not, title colors, work colors, height, uh, width, gap, and entries. Now, you can see that this entries, um, it's we don't know how big the array is. It's just, we don't know how big it is. Uh, that means that Wimp menu is gonna have to be a pointer. We're gonna have to allocate it enough memory to fit in however many Wimp menu entries we want. So let's get started. Um, First thing we can do is we make our Wimp menu uh, a global variable in our icon bar file. Let's do that. So Wimp menu, it's going to be a pointer. And we're going to call it main menu, just like that. Lovely. Then uh, let's get started and let's uh, build it, I guess. So in our icon bar, we're going to want to, uh, I think we're going to, what we're going to do is we're going to make a init icon bar. No, 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 in, yeah, init icon bar file function, sorry. Um, yeah, that looks good. So let's get started with that. So we're going to want to make our menu. So first thing we want, what we're going to want to do is allocate enough memory. So it's going to have the size of a WIMP menu, but then we're going to add the size of a WIMP menu entry. There we go. Then we're going to times that by the number of entries we're going to have. We're only going to have one. So, um, yeah, that'll be fine. So let's get started with filling this menu with stuff. So what's in a menu item? So we've got title, uh, well, text first. So let's use our. I won't be fine. Just save some space. So we'll do string copy. Um, so our destination is main menu. Pointer, because it is a pointer. We're going to go to our um, title data and dot text. We're going to set that to dot six and it's got a limit of 12. Next, we're going to set the foreground color. So main menu pointer, I'm going to copy that. So I'm going to type that out loads. It's a uh, control shift C for copy and control shift V for paste. So I'm going to copy that and say the title foreground, we'll make that black. Then main menu. Oh, I've copied that. There we go. Title underscore background. We'll set that equal to light gray, I think. Wimp underscore color underscore light underscore gray. Like that. Then we'll put the work foreground. And we'll set that equal to wimp underscore color underscore uh, black and then 
we'll have a look at our work background and we'll set that equal to white because if you look at menus they tend to have white backgrounds so win underscore color underscore white so next thing we're going to want to do now that we've set all the colors um, is we'll want to set our width now I'm just using I'm just going to use um, numbers that I've experimented with and I have my width at about 96 and I have my height at about 44 and then I have my gap at zero I don't want a big gap between them because if you have a look down here some of them uh, this one for example there's the risk OS one it doesn't have any gaps between each item but then the uh, strong help one and strong ed one does um, I just have a normal one without any gaps um, brilliant so now we need to do the menu entry so we're going to add in one menu entry and it's just going to be a quit menu entry so um, entries zero dot I'm going to copy that because we're going to be using that a lot now um, so first thing we want to do is add menu flags menu flags now there's only one menu flag we need and it's this wimp menu last one wimp menu last so you add that to the last item in your menu because if you don't add that um, your menu just keeps on going up and up and up adding weird gobbledygook underneath and sometimes crashing because it keeps on going through your memory looking for more and more menu items um, next thing we want to do is what's next sub menu we don't actually want a sub menu so we're going to set that equal to this. We're going to go imp menu. So we're casting this um, zero. You put a zero if you don't want a sub menu, which we don't want one. So brilliant. Next, we want um, icon flags. Do quite a few of these as normal. We want the wimp icon text flag. Um, I don't think we want any more of these flags because we don't have it centered in any way. Um, so the next thing I think we'll do is we'll go um, wimp underscore, oops, my icon wrong, typo there. Um, I'm good at typos. <laughs> um, what do you want? You want foreground color and background color. So the way we do this is we want wimp color underscore black and we're going to shift that by wimp underscore icon underscore I can't see what I'm typing in uh, fg underscore color underscore shift um, now make it so it all fits like that um, Next, we're going to want wimp underscore color underscore white. And we'll shift that by wimp underscore icon underscore background underscore color underscore shift like that. Um, oh, I forgot to add the or operator to both of these. And finally, what we want is you want to add the ability to it be clicked on. So we'll wimp underscore button wimp underscore button underscore click but we need to shift that by wimp underscore uh, icon underscore button underscore type underscore shift so there you go and that's all of our flags now if I were making a menu with multiple menu items I'd make a icon flag variable and then I'd just set all of the icon flags using that variable so I don't need to type or copy and paste all of that big chunk out over and over again. Um, so next thing we want to do is data. Now in the data we're just setting the text. So uh, we'll go string b destination data dot text. We're gonna have in it quit. And uh, it's 12.
so I had to stop the video for technical reasons. Um, right, where have we got to? There, lovely. So we've made our menu item. Um, lovely. Let's carry on then. Now that we've made our menu item, we need to make sure that this init icon bar function is called. Um, let's add it to our header file first. Um, and yes, yeah, so let's add that in. So after we've initialized our task, we'll call our init icon bar function. So all of that should be ready. Um, so the next thing we need to do is actually make it open. Now, if we have a look at here, at our block pointer, oh no, here we go, sorry, at our mouse click event. So we check if the block.pointer.w is, so we check if the pointer is in the icon bar, and if it is, we run this. Um, now, what I'd rather do is I'd rather, um, I'd rather all of this was in the icon bar file, so I can separate this because there could be something for each button, all three buttons, and that could be quite long. Um, I'd rather all of the functionality for each part of this application was in its own file. So I'm going to move all of this into the icon bar file. So first thing we need to do is we're going to make a function void, and we want this to uh, we want this to respond to clicks. So what should we call it? We'll call it um, icon bar click like that. And we'll have a pointer, uh, sorry, a wimp block pointer called block. And we'll have a wimp window pointer, double pointer called window. What we'll then do is we'll um, what we'll then do is we'll um, we shall move that. We'll move all this. So let's copy that. Um, because what you've got to remember is you've got to remember that we are including in the icon bar dot h. We're including utilities. So um, this load window into block function is also available um, to us in our icon bar file. The only thing though is we don't we take away that. And we can take away that because they are the same. Um, oh, I forgot. Pointer. Pointer item. There we go. Um, because they are the same types as in here. Uh, we can also also need to change that because this is now a pointer. It's not a pointer in our this file. Uh, lovely. Um, but what we still want to do is we want to check to see what button's been clicked. So we're going to have a switch statement. And we're going to switch block. Now it's the pointer. So we're using pointer arithmetic. And we want pointer um, dot. Um, I can't actually remember what I'm looking for. It's really useful, this, actually. Um, so we're going in our block. We're going in our pointer dot buttons. There we go. Buttons. So this is going to tell us. Um, what button, what mouse button has been clicked. So our first case is going to be click select, which is our normal uh, right, uh, left click. So wimp underscore click underscore select. Lovely. And we'll just indent these correctly then break. The other one is our menu. So case wimp underscore um, click underscore menu. And what we want to do there is we want to use our uh, function that we've been looking at, our wimp underscore create underscore menu. And it takes, it's going to take in our main menu and it's going to take in an X coordinate. Now let's look at how menus work. Now you'll look that the x coordinate is in line with our mouse, but it's just offset a little bit. So we're going to use our pause thing from wind block. So block uh, pointer 
dot pos dot x and I'm going to minus 44 because if you have a look it's not quite in line with where the pointer is it's offset quite a bit uh, 44 is a number I've just plucked out of thin air I'm not gonna lie <laughs> but then our y coordinate doesn't change depending on where the y coordinate is so I'm just gonna move it up maybe 200 All right, that's another number that I've just guessed so um, <laughs> we'll see where that puts me we'll see see if that works for us um, and of course we need to break at the end um, wow so let's compile this um, and see if this works so far oh hold on I'm gonna want to put this in not quite there yet I'm sorry I getting ahead of myself now um, we need to link everything up so um, top six all the way down here yep let's take out that and replace it with let's replace it with that and we want to pass into it the address of our block and the address of our pointer to our window like that there we go now I can save it and now let's build it let's see if it's worked so far so let's hit make and at the end I'm going to do a summary I'm going to recap what we've looked at oh in function main right so there is an error um, on line 37 if we keep on going, if it keeps on, oh, that there's more errors, lots of errors. Ah, uh, here we go. Let's look at them. I've not put main menu. I've put main main somewhere. That's an interesting typo. Um, but I think that's the only typos. So let's go in here and let's have a look. So uh, line thirty, oh, line thirty-seven. Um. So, aha, I should have got rid of the void there. Um, save that. Uh, where was the other one? So, line 10 in our icon bar file. Um, here we go. Main menu. That's better. Save that. We'll try again. It's always type. I don't think I'm ever going to make a tutorial where it just compiles correctly first time. I'm not feeling that lucky. Right, let's have a look, see if it's worked this time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of these numbers, by the way, are completely guessed because um, the reason I'm making these tutorials is not because I like making video tutorials, it's because I could not find any information on how to do uh, this sort of programming. and. I've now worked out how to work out how to do it, and um, but there's still a lot of guesswork involved. Um, it's good fun though. So let's have a look. So if we open our application. First thing to test is, there we go. It closes the window, but it doesn't close the application. So that's cool. Now, does this still work? Yep, that still worked. Now the moment of truth. If I middle click on here, is it going to open the menu? There we go. It opens the menu. It's way too high. But it opens it. Now you'll notice that clicking on the menu actually doesn't do anything yet. So we have to go into it here and close it that way. So let's add some functionality. Um, but first, let's move this down. I'll move it down to 144. 44 is my sort of lucky risk OS programming number at the moment. Um, so let's have a look. Let's make it work. <laughs> um, wrong one, I meant that one. So if we have a look, we're going to add another statement into our uh, win block. So let's have a look, let's go and here we go, event number. So here we go, win menu selection, that looks good. So wimp menu selection. So let's do this properly. So 
if we go into our WIMP block, uh, how are we going to work out what's been selected? I think it's going to be WIMP uh, selection. So I'm going to try that. We'll have, um, yeah, we'll have a switch statement because I know we only have one menu item, so it actually wouldn't matter. We could just uh, say any menu item here quick, but I'm going to show you how to do it um, if you have multiple menu items. Um, so we're going to switch our block. Um, oh no, it's not a pointer here. Block dot selection and what's in it here? So it is integer, brilliant. That works with switch statements, but it's an array. So we'll just get the first item of that. So let's let's see. So case zero, our first menu item. All we want to do is set quit ooh, quit equal to true and break it. There we go. So uh, yeah, I mean, actually, let's let's do a bit more than that. Let's be good. Let's be good. Somehow. I think we're going to free some more stuff as well. Well, free main menu. I don't think there's anything else that I've allocated a menu to in here. I think it's just the, I think it's just these two things. Brilliant. So uh, we'll save that. We'll make it, and let's see if, um, see if this works now. Oh, oh dear, what have I done? Line forty-seven. Forty-seven. Here we go. Uh, ah, yes. Dot items. It's dot items. Block dot selection dot items. Um, I'll show you where I've got that from. I just went uh, block dot selection. But inside selection, it's items. That is the nine element array. So, or did I save that? Yeah, I did. I did save that. Good. Uh, we'll try that again. See if it works this time. Never make it easy, do they? <laughs> yeah, I'm very happy with the way at the moment. You may notice. I sound happier. I've just been told that I've uh, got um, an interview. At Oxford University for computer science, so I'm happy about that. Let's try this. Open application. Go down here. You can middle click. Oh, it's pretty much in line. It's better. And if we click it, oh, something may have gone wrong. Let's describe it. Illegal window handle. Hmm. Right. I think I know what that issue is. So, yeah, here we go. <laughs> Now this is something that I, yeah, this is a, a lesson to be learned in computer science. If it says, so illegal, illegal window handle, that sounds like it's something to do with our window or our handling of the window. Now the lesson I think you should take away from this is if it says it's something to do with how you're handling the window, that is probably not where the error is. Um, the error is actually with how we're handling the menu. Now, can you see that we've we've made a switch statement here and we've put a break there under that case, but we forgot to put a case with our WIMP selection thing. So if I'm gonna put a break there as well. Um, and the error was it was doing this and then it was continuing. It was then going to the open window uh, request. Now you'll notice something, which is our block. It's not uh, it's not a struct. It's a union. Now that means that uh, even though I could use the same block, I go block dot redraw, block dot open, block dot close, just like a struct. Um, in a union, uh, it can't be; it doesn't store all of this information. It only stores one of these at a time, and you can access the information um, in different formats, in different ways, uh, by using the different dots. So dot a block dot redraw has all the same information as block dot open. But it's uh, presented differently. 
um, quite difficult, differently actually. Um, but the thing is, block dot selection actually doesn't have any of the same information as block dot open. Um, so it went to use the block. It carried on. It went to open window pressed. It went to use the block to open the window, and then it went, oh, hold on, we have none of this information. Um, I can't open the window, so it threw an error for illegal handle. Um, but now that we've had the break, we won't carry on. Um, so we'll try that again. In fact, first, before I make that again, I'd like to show you something. If we go into our make file, um, if you add a new one of these, and it's B, um, it won't uh, spit, it won't tell you that it's deleted all the files at the end. Um, that's good because um, every time it says that it's deleted all the files, I think, oh god, I've made an error. But no, it's just telling me it's deleted all the files. So I'll show you that it looks different this time. Um, Brilliant. So let's open this up. Oh no, wrong thing. Open this up. So it's working. Buttons are working. Uh, our function is working because the middle button is working. And if I quit, it closes the whole application. It disappears from an icon bar, disappears from task manager and everything. Brilliant. Uh, so I'll do a quick summary of what we did. First thing we did is we commented out this line so that it wouldn't quit the application when we hit the close button. The next thing we did is we looked at how menu worked and we made an initialize function to build the menu and add the menu entry. Um, we then created uh, our icon bar click um, function, which switched to check which button had been clicked. If it was the select button, it would load the menu into the block using a function we made ages ago in utilities, and it would open the window. Then if it was a menu click, it would open the window we made here, open the menu that we made here. Um, we then went into top six again. We made sure that it ran that initialize function. We changed it so it would run our icon bar click if our pointer was in the uh, icon bar and not in the main window. And uh, we did something, so it we made a switch statement that would see which menu item had been selected and then quit was our quick one. Brilliant. That's everything. Um, I'll see you next tutorial. Uh, next tutorial, I think what I'm going to be doing is a bit of restructuring. We're going to remake this application, a slightly more complicated version of the application. I'm going to show you uh, something to do with redrawing buttons. Um, we'll see when we get onto it. And um, I'm going to show you how to make it a bit more like Visual Studio. So um, we'll have a file that only has just functions, just a list of functions for um, a certain window and the buttons in that window. Um, and then we'll have an icon bar, which only have a list of functions for the icon bar related stuff. Um, yeah, brilliant. I think that's everything. I'll, uh, I'll but also be looking at pointers to functions. I'll see you next uh, next week, I guess. Um, like this video if you like it, by the way, because it helps other people find it. It makes it more discoverable. And I think we all want to find how brilliant it is to program and see a new to us. Um, brilliant. See you uh, next week.